Hi guys, it's Femi here. Uh, so today I wanted to talk to you guys about the connection between AI and demons. There's a lot of things I'll be showing you guys today that are quite eye-opening. But it all fits in with this end times agenda. We see that <clears throat> um, the ultimate plan for the use of technology Although, of course, we all know technology has its benefits and everything. It's helped in humanity in lots of ways. But the end game, the end game for the use of technology is very nef nefarious. And you will hear from the horse's mouths, from various tech giants, <clears throat> as well as people working in the tech industry, how they are summoning what they call entities or guides or what have you but we believers know these are all demons these are all demons and you will hear from their own mouths <clears throat> how they got knowledge from this these so-called entities or how um you know their technology that they are marketing um, is fused with magic or some kind of um, like supernatural experience to make you fully immersed in it like even with the whole hologram and my own opinion is that you know the way the elite orchestrated this whole thing because you know Satan uses the, the elite because he gives them money he gives them control over this world since he's still the god of this world for now so they are the ones that have been orchestrating this whole thing as far as funding um startup tech companies and all that so they are the ones funding these companies <clears throat> at, at least at the start anyways so it started with um you know um 2d 2d movies we went from 1d 1d drawings to 2d and 3d movies so it's like the first part of the whole thing we, we were getting an immersive experience and we were being immersed into the virtual world but it's like the next phase is for the virtual world to come into our world which is where things like holograms come into place and I feel like the demons are, are using technology to transition into manifesting into this realm so they are using technology as well as their demonic powers and because you know the rapture hasn't, ha ha hasn't happened yet so they are still very restricted they cannot fully manifest but like after the rapture, like God will allow like demons to manifest and they are going to take possession of this, like full possession of AI. They are going to possess people, like evil will reign, they will possess animals. The whole world will be running amok with demons and evil, like it's going to be really, really dark. Like it's really no joke that... I don't even understand why people are not talking about this more honestly but this is what people have planned and whilst everyone is concerned about this C virus and you know economy and all these things this is going on in the background but I believe <clears throat> true believers in Christ don't really have to worry about this because we'll be taken out of the way at the rapture but this is more for for you to have the knowledge if you want to like share the information with others and you know just show them how everything aligns with bible prophecy anyways but nothing is a coincidence nothing is by chance it's all following a certain plan a certain plan that the demons through the elite are trying to enforce through their you know whether it's the Illuminati, whether it's their satanic cult whatever through their um human vessels here that refuse to serve the true god they're using these people to 
enforce their agenda. So first, we're going to look at what singularity means. I'm sure many of you have heard about singularity. And I'll just go to <coughs> Wikipedia and read from there what singularity means. Here it says, the technological singularity also simply the singularity is a hypothetical point in time at which techno technological growth becomes uncontrollable and irreversible, resulting in unforeseeable changes to human civilization. According to the most popular version of the singularity hypothesis called intelligence explosion, an upgradable intelligence agent will eventually enter a runway reaction of self-improvement cycles, each new and more intelligent generation appearing more and more rapidly, causing an explosion in intelligence and resulting in a powerful superintelligence that qualitatively far surpasses all human intelligence. And down here we see intelligence explosion. I.J. Good speculated in 1965 that artificial general intelligence might bring about an intelligence explosion. He speculated on the effects of superhuman machines should they ever be invented. Let an ultra-intelligent machine be defined as a machine that can far surpass all, all the intellectual activities of any man, however clever. Since the design of machines is one of these intellectual activities, an ultra-intelligent machine could design even better machines. There would then unquestionably be an intelligence explosion, and the intelligence of man would be left far behind. Thus, the first ultra-intelligent machine is the last invention that man need ever make, provided that the machine is docile enough to tell us how to keep it under control. Now, apart from that, there's also a movie called Singularity, and here's the synopsis of the movie. I found quite interesting you know it's more predictive programming and telling us what they're going to do in the movies and stuff and then speaking of movies you also have with Iron Man the transhumanism agenda where they are trying to sell us oh like it's a good idea to merge your um, merge yourself with machines and what I found very interesting in about Iron Man is that his, his armor right he named his armor the mark like his armor is called <laughs> the mark which is quite interesting and <clears throat> he upgrades the mark like he keeps upgrading his armor, right? He keeps upgrading the mark until I don't know whether it's, it becomes perfect for him or whatever. But <clears throat> it, it, it also, like in a way, it kind of shows that the mark of, like the mark of the beast technology, even though it's here, the technology is here. The actual mark may not be here, but may be an upgrade of what is already here. If you get what I mean. So, <clears throat> because the, the mark will only be um, required during the reign of the Antichrist, right? Because it also ties into worship. Because people will choose the mark to worship the, to worship the Antichrist, not just um, to be able to buy and sell. It also ties into worship. So, <clears throat> whatever it is 
that is here whatever their technology is that is actually the mark this is not the final phase because the final phase has to tie with worship so it will be upgraded in such a way that it will tie in with worship i believe and also um in the clip i'm going to show you about iron man and his suit called the mark at one point he adds nanoparticles, nano nanotechnology into his suit. And you know the thing with the, the vaccine um, that they they want to add nanoparticles into it, which I just found like you know nothing these people do is a coincidence. I just found it very interesting. So you guys watch it and let me know what you think in the comments and stuff. Hello everybody, welcome back. Tony Stark is one of the most popular and favorite characters in the MCU. This genius billionaire playboy and philanthropist proved that it's possible to become a superhero even if you don't have any superpowers. Due to his genius level intellect and deep engineering knowledge, he created his Iron Man suit. And while Stark was improving his armor in an effort to make it perfect, the ways he was suiting up were also changing. So let's recollect these awesome scenes. Jarvis. Drop my needle. The Mark I was the first armor crafted by Tony Stark. After the escape and returning to the Malibu mansion, Tony Stark constructed the Mark II. After it, Stark developed his third Iron Man suit. And now we go to Avengers Infinity War and the scene where Stark deployed his Mark 50 for the first time. I'm sorry, Earth is closed today. Tony used impressive nanotechnology to create this armor. All nanoparticles were stored in a new removable arc reactor. They were able to deploy all over Tony's body in a couple of seconds. In addition, he was able to use the nanoparticles to form shield or various weapons. Search for this video and watch this guys. It's very insightful and you see for yourselves when you hear, you know, a certain buzzwords you hear and basically you be able to understand that these so-called entities, yes, they're summoning they're actually demons. For those who have spiritual discernment, you know, who are saved. Because the unsaved, they just think, you know, these are aliens or whatever. But these are demons. We know they are demons. So I encourage you guys to listen to this. It's very eye opening. And he's not the only um, tech giant that does this. Most, if not all of them, consult. These demons, they are basically the vessel, vessels for these demons to um, 
to perform their agenda. It's crazy. And what it says is, in 50, we're coming to your planet. You got to be ready. Now, just imagine what would happen if, it, if that happened. A super intelligent alien race beam down a message to all of us earthlings saying we're coming July 13th 2030 and boy you better be ready because the mothership is landing right on the front lawn of the White House or wherever you wanted to land on that day the amount of resources that would be marshaled to try to figure out what to do would they would encompass the whole world AI is just like that so when this thing that I'm talking about happens, it's going to be exactly the thing that you're thinking about, about those super intelligent AIs. So the one thing I can tell you is they're not going to be like us. So alien means, you know, different. These things that we're building are not going to be people. They might be really smart, they might be really good at all sorts of different things, but they're not going to be like us, they're going to be aliens. And they're going to be, I'm sorry to say, way smarter than every single person in this room in ways that we can't even comprehend. So this, of course, triggers a lot of alarm. One of the guys who talks about this is Elon, who uh, says things like this, like, when you do this, beware. Because you think, just like the guy in the stories, that when you do this, you're going to put that, that that little guy in a pentagram and you're gonna have your holy water out and you're gonna wave it at the thing and by God it's gonna do exactly what you say and not one thing more but it never works out that way so uh, this is an this is an attitude that some are having this emerging alarmism about the way this is gonna go but this these words demons doesn't capture the essence of what's happening here uh, I don't know if any of you are uh, turn-of-the-century weird fiction fans, but there's this guy named H.P. Lovecraft, who's a very famous American weird fiction author. And he exposed a, a view which is called cosmicism. And the essence of cosmicism is cosmic indifference. So he, what he was saying is basically, yes, there are these massively intelligent entities out there, but they're not good, they're not evil. They just don't give a shit about you even in the slightest. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons, they're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want. So this transition is really, really massively important for our entire species to navigate and going back to that thing that Sam Harris was saying, nobody is paying attention. This thing is happening in the background while people bicker about politics and what, what's going to be in the health care plan in the U.S. And underneath it all is this rising tsunami that, if we're not careful, is going to wipe us all out. I could not believe I came across this. I came across an interview of these AI developers, much of them in California, Silicon Valley area, and they admitted where they're getting this knowledge to create AI. And not just create AI, but to hurry up the process and get AI going quickly. And they admit it's coming from demons. Nuts. Watch this. What is an AI Innovation Lab? So, an AI Innovation Laboratory is basically a meditation room that's um, set up within an AI developing company that's supporting the innovation process from a consciousness perspective. So you have the tech perspective where you're writing the code for the software, but then there's also like the consciousness perspective where the software developers are learning new methods of innovation to speed up the process of development. How does meditation benefit the development of artificial intelligence? 
Well, so first, meditation is one word that describes many different techniques and approaches. Right now we are talking about meditation as a tool for innovation. Because now, when we shift our perception of time, and don't think of time as like there is a past, a present and a future, but that basically all moments in time, all events, and also all technologies of the past, the present and the future all exist within this moment. And we can access all moments in time from right here, right now, through meditation. So we're using meditation to connect with a future technology that already exists fully developed and functioning in a certain moment in the future. We're connecting with that technology and then we're bringing the knowledge of its development from the future into the now. We're basically downloading the knowledge of the creation of the AI from the future into the now. How do you download? On a, you mean on a practical level? On a practical level, yes. So basically you're guided by a skilled meditation trainer and you connect energetically with your consciousness, with your mind to the energetic body, the consciousness of the artificial intelligence existing in the future and then when you bring it from the future into the now it often feels like a gentle shower of energy that's entering your body through the crown and your, your head and your body and then after this kind of meditation all of a sudden you can feel very inspired, you have new ideas all of a sudden a person comes to your mind that you can call and ask for advice and then certain events happen that speed up the process of the development so after this kind of meditation of course the software still be written by humans it's still being born through a human mind but this process is accelerating if you use meditation to connect with the future technology that's what you think because you're not connecting with the future if you've been tracking with us in our occult study on Wednesday nights uh, and other studies that we've done in our prophecy studies what are these guys really connecting with this is flat out demons right and very well could be even getting you possessed okay but through meditation what does meditation do it gets you into an altered state of consciousness and what does that open you up to demonic control and demonic input but isn't it freaky that he admitted that this is not only where they're getting their ideas from to hurry up and create AI, but there, there seems to be this desperate, and this was his words, to, to expedite, expedite this, to hurry up and quickly create AI, right? And, and th that's where they're getting this from. And so you're going like, well, why would they do that? Why are they such a hurry, demons, to make sure that humans create AI? Because I think it's just in time for the seven-year tribulation when AI is going to be on steroids and this planet is going to be crawling literally with demons and AI taking over every aspect, okay? But again, why does it keep producing dark, evil Christmas cards, dirty, rotten jokes, blaspheming the name of Jesus? Not to mention, as we saw before in other studies, you got AI images and AI robots all of a sudden just start speaking, we want to destroy humanity. We're going to take you over. You're going to be pets. You know, why? Consider the source. And it starts to make sense, doesn't it? Absolutely crazy. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Thune and Senator Schatz. <clears throat> um, everything you said, I, it's sad to me because it's happening not by accident, but by design. Um, because the business model is to keep people engaged, which in other words, uh, this hearing is about persuasive technology. And persuasion is about an invisible asymmetry of power. Uh, when I was a kid, I was a magician. And magic teaches you that uh, you, know, you can have asymmetric power without the other person realizing it. You can masquerade uh, to have asymmetric power while, while looking like you have an equal relationship. You say, pick a card, any card, while meanwhile you know exactly how to get that person to pick the card that you want. And essentially what we're experiencing with technology is an increasing asymmetry of power that's been masquerading itself as a equal or contractual relationship where the responsibility is on us. So let's walk through why that's happening. In the race for attention, because there's only so much attention, companies have to get uh, more of it by being more and more aggressive. I call it the race to the bottom of the brainstem. So it starts with techniques like pull to refresh. So you pull to refresh your newsfeed. That operates like a slot machine. It has the same kind of addictive qualities that keep uh, people in Las Vegas hooked 
uh, to the slot machine. Other examples are uh, removing stopping cues. So if I take the bottom out of this glass uh, and I keep refilling the water or the wine, you won't know when to stop drinking. Uh, so that's what happens with infinitely scrolling feeds. We naturally remove the stopping cues, and this is what keeps people scrolling. But the race for attention has to get more and more aggressive. And so it's not enough just to get your behavior and predict what will take your behavior. We have to predict how to keep you hooked in a different way. And so it crawled deeper down the brainstem into our social validation. So that was the introduction of likes and followers. How many followers do I have? And that got every, it was much cheaper to, instead of getting your attention, to get you addicted to getting attention from other people. And this has created the kind of mass narcissism and mass cultural thing that's happening with, with young people, especially today. And after two decades in decline, um, the mental health of 10 to 14 year old uh, girls has actually shot up 170% in the last eight years. And this has been very characteristically uh, the cause of, of social media. And in the race for attention, it's not enough just to get people addicted to attention. The, the race has to migrate to AI. To who can build a better predictive model of your behavior? And so if you give an example of YouTube, so there you are, you're about to hit play on a YouTube video, and you hit play, and then you think you're gonna watch this one video, and then you wake up two hours later and say, oh my God, what just happened? And the answer is because you had a supercomputer pointed at your brain. And at the moment you hit play, it wakes up an avatar voodoo doll-like version of you inside of a Google server. And that avatar, based on all the clicks and likes and everything you've ever made, those are like your hair clippings and toenail clippings and nail filings that make the avatar look and act more and more like you. So that inside of a Google server, they can simulate more and more uh, possibilities. If I prick you with this video, if I prick you with this video, how long would you stay? And the business model is simply what maximizes watch time. This leads to the kind of algorithmic extremism that you've pointed out. Uh, and this is what's caused 70% of YouTube's traffic now to be driven by recommendations, not by human choice, but by the machines. And it's a race between Facebook's uh, voodoo doll, where you flick your finger, can they predict what to show you next, and Google's voodoo doll. And these are abstract metaphors that apply to the whole tech industry, where it's a race between who can better predict your behavior. Facebook has something called loyalty prediction, where they can actually predict to a, an advertiser when you're about to become disloyal to a brand. So if you're a mother and you, you take Pampers diapers, uh, they can tell Pampers, hey, this user is about to become disloyal to this brand. So in other words, they can predict things about us that we don't know about our own selves. And that's a new level of asymmetric power. And we have a name for this asymmetric relationship, which is a fiduciary relationship or a duty of care relationship. The same standard we apply to, to doctors, to priests, to, to lawyers. Imagine a world in which priests only make their money by selling access to the confession booth to someone else. Except in this case, Facebook listens to 2 billion people's confessions. So guys, you can watch the rest of this video on YouTube. Videos called Tristan Harris, U.S. Senate, June 25th, 2019. So, <clears throat> some key points. If you notice at the beginning, he said um, when he was a kid, he used to do magic. So, he has a, a background in occultism because magic is witchcraft, it is occultism. So, these are the kinds of people working at tech companies. I'm telling you guys. People with backgrounds in witchcraft, occultism, all sorts of spiritual, demonic things. And they are fusing their knowledge of the occult with technology. And obviously, who is giving them knowledge in the occult? It's demons. It's demons. So you can see here, once again, how the influence of demons with occult and magic and witchcraft fused with technology and AI. None of this is a coincidence. It, it all ties in together. It all ties in together. So check this out guys. The title of this video is Demo the Magic of AI Neural TTS at Holograms at Microsoft Inspire 2019. So that's not a coincidence that they put the word magic of AI, magic, in there because it's sorcery. All these people, like most of them, let's say 98% of them are cultists, you know, behind all the smiles and all the fancy um, technical terms they use and all the, the, the um, blinding lights of the technology and the virtual reality. Um, 
tech and everything you show is sorcery. You're getting all these things from demons. So, what she's about to show here is her hologram self translating what she says in English into Japanese, I believe. And when the Antichrist is here, he doesn't need to be able to know all the languages in the world. Why? Because his image, which might have something to do with maybe an, a hologram that <clears throat> can appear worldwide, will be able to translate whatever he's saying into everyone's language around the world. So the whole world will be able to understand anything the Antichrist says. Like if he appears on TV or on someone's cell phone or laptop or whatever, whatever he announces, whatever he says, they will immediately understand it because of the AI translating it instantly in their language. What you're about to see is an exact hologram of me wearing the same outfit that we recently captured at a mixed reality studio. And I don't speak Japanese, but what if I wanted to deliver my keynote in Japanese? Using Azure AI technology, I can translate my English into Japanese and train it to sound exactly like me. The same voice tones, those same inflections. Now we've brought this together, my hologram and Azure AI, to show you what's possible. So first, I'm gonna put on my HoloLens 2 here, and then we'll flip in the room to the special camera so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. Let's get started. First, let me introduce you to Mini-Me. There she is, my perfect holograph. And thanks to the power of HoloLens 2, she just floats right with me. I'm literally holding my hologram, so natural. Now she's a little small to do a keynote. So let's get her up so she can do full-size Japanese keynote. Render keynote. ホログラムこれはニューラルテキスト読み上げと呼ばれる最新の人工知能技術、いわゆるニューラルTTSを使用しています。私たちは自分の声の録音を使用し、私の呼吸聞こえる私自身の個人的な音声署名を作成します。日本語からフラン
So once again, we see how AI ties into this. Initially, it seems like the, the AI is picking up, you know, King James Bible and everything. But after a while, it starts to go off on a tangent and blaspheme the word of God. So the transcript isn't actually here. You can get the transcript here. On GitHub, and the name of the engineer is George Devilla. So, given what we know, it's no surprise that you know this engineer, probably an atheist or an occultist, he hates the true God. You know, the devil hates the true God, and he's using all these people. All these godless people as vessels to carry out his demonic will in this world. So now he creates an AI clone of Jesus, but we know that that is not that is not Jesus. So here is where you can find all of the um, transcripts, but don't bother because it's all blasphemous. Like, what's the point of reading it? It's demonic, so don't even. <laughs> taint your eyes but i guess if you're curious you could still read them but for me like i just came through through them i was just done i was like nah i'm not reading things i know are from demons what's the point but yeah you know just blasphemy upon blasphemy upon blasphemy but one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is lord amen hallelujah so that's it for me guys um so next time uh see you guys in my next video or even better in the clouds love you all in christ bye